guys, my name is Jo and I'm the CEO of Navistar Legal and today I'm interviewing Simon Atkinson from Marble Scott. Welcome Simon. Hi Jo. So Marble Scott is an ethical investment company and they purchase SMEs, small and mid-sized businesses that the owner has a life reason for leaving. Simon, tell us a little bit more about what you do and how you do it. What is an ethical investment company? Okay, so... When we, uh, we formed Marlborough Scott, um, what we were doing, in essence, maybe isn't that different to what, what other people do. I mean, lots of people buy businesses. Um, we are investor buyers, which is uh, effectively, we're, we're not trade buyers. We, we, we're not a, you know, a manufacturer buying part of their supply chain or another manufacturer. But we, we wanted to be clear when we started it that there was something... Um, not just that set us aside from others, but made us feel right about what we're doing. Um, and, and to that end, when we say ethical, we're very committed to making sure that whatever arrangement we make with the seller of that business genuinely benefits them. So we're not looking to pick up distressed businesses. We're not looking to pick up businesses for a fraction of their real value. Um, equally, by the way, we're not looking to, to you know, pay two or three times the real value, but we're looking to give a, a genuinely fair outcome to somebody who may have built that business up for a very long time, 20, 30 years. Um, and, and the reasons for selling, you, you know, we said a life change, a life changing event, perhaps um, it, it, it could be uh, illness. It could be retirement. It could be a genuine desire simply to do something else, but we want their efforts to be appropriately recognized and rewarded. Mm. And when we take that business, we're not just going to run it as it has been run. We will do that, but over the top of that, we're, we're going to grow it. We're going to improve it as best we can. So uh, everybody wins. So that's what we mean by ethical. That, that's actually the words that were coming to my mind. I was thinking of the kind of win-win-win triangle. It, yeah, everybody, everybody is benefiting, and it's not a win-lose or a kind of attrition where nobody wins. And uh, that, that's great. I, I know you're quite experienced in business, so I'm keen to hear a little bit about. Uh, I want to hear more about Marvel Scott, but I'm also keen to hear about your experience in business. Um, and your attitude to risk. So I, I talk sometimes about a scale. I know when we talked in Manchester, I probably mentioned this scale, a one to 16, and you laughed. You were like, one to 16? What does that, what is it one to 16? But we had a scale of one to 16, one being kind of take no risk, 16 being go with the risk, do whatever you've got to do, you know, dot no I's, cross no T's. Uh, where do you see yourself on that scale and how... Like how, how do you kind of manage risk, both in Marlborough Scott in, and in other businesses? Well, personally, um, I'm fairly prepared to take risks as long as they are um, intelligent risks. Um, uh, where that is on your 1 to 16 scale, I'm not really sure because I, I don't really know what those numbers mean. But, you know, it's certainly going to be in the top 25% somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how do we manage that risk in business, um, I think personal risk and business risk, th there are some things that are the same and some things that are quite different. Um, with business, there are certain checkpoints and processes that, that exist by the nature of business uh, in terms of what you will work through with your accountant, with your bankers, with your lawyers, with, without any other source of funding, the stuff that you just have to do. And, and you should do. And I think that creates a, a framework for your ability to, to deal with a risk. Um, that doesn't exist so much in, in personal life. So it's arguably easier, in my opinion, to take personal risks than perhaps you would in business. Plus also there are people depending on you um, mm. in both cases. But generally in business, it may well be a lot more people. Because you, you're probably going to have a bigger company than family, unless there's something seriously awry. So um, <laughs> I would I would therefore think that that uh, in business you can manage that risk within that framework, and you can adjust that risk up or down according to your nature. Now, now I often find um, with with clients with companies that I work with, you usually find that you get a balance of that at the board level, and usually the MD is more keen to take risks than the FD. 
Mm -hmm. uh, FDs are generally by their nature more cautious. I do have a client where it's the other way around, which is actually seriously quite weird, um, but it, it, it still works for them. Um, I don't think there are probably very many companies where everybody's happy to take risks, uh, unless they're startups and they're, they're, they're you know, heavily backed um, and, and they tend not to last very long. So, um, yeah, from, from my perspective, I, I think I will manage it according to the different people on the board. And uh, you you look at each each type of risk and uh, you know with its its merits and demerits at the time really. You just focus on you focus on the risk at the time. There's no particular. I mean, it, it, uh, yeah, I know you and you're you're certainly what I would think your um, attitude to risk was is you're willing to take risks. You're not you're not willing to take stupid risks, and you're you're but you're also not in the position of. Um, yeah, where that where that's going to cost you a lot of money, or where there's going to be um, kind of a breakdown in a relationship, it's kind of a no go. That's that's the way I see it with you. But if it makes sense to all, then then you'll you'll probably take it. Yeah, I, I always try to have a plan uh, for something. So uh, I think it's fairly fairly well known that you should never enter into something without an exit plan. Um, not necessarily thinking of lockdown here, but that. <laughs> um, so, for me, if I if I was going to take out funding for a business, I would obviously want to know that I, I believe that that funding can be repaid. Yeah. Okay. For example, I'm sure there are people out there who are a little less scrupulous who perhaps take out funding without knowing that, or possibly in hope rather than in expectation. Uh, so. I would always have a plan for dealing with that, and ideally a backup plan. Um, but that would not stop me taking the risk in the first place. Yeah. You see what I mean? Because if you yeah. don't take risks, you can't build a business. You can't be an entrepreneur. Uh, effectively, you're you're stuck in a in a, a channel, really. 